Welcome back to the GTN show. I am flying solo today, which is uh, a little bit dangerous because if you remember a few weeks back when I last flew solo, I dived into that juicy Iron Man CEO podcast. Uh, I'll try and keep it a little less dramatic today, but we do still have some controversy over some carbon shoes used at WTCS Abu Dhabi some shoes that have been tailored to certain running paces, a controversial short and swim Ironman South Africa, and a DQ for that matter. And let's not forget all the racing from the weekend, which was very exciting. Right, as always, I'm going to kick off with some of the things I've spotted on social media and on the internet this past week. Now, last week, we discussed the new brand from Trimtex, their triathlon-specific brand called Surpass. Now, they have just announced a notable new member to their team, and that is Gustav Eden. Now, interestingly, Gustav actually was part of the Trimtex team a number of years back, raced in Trimtex gear for years, along with the Norwegian team. So he's kind of done full circle. He left there and went to Santini for a couple of years, and now is back where he started, but with this new brand of Surpass adjoining Christian Blumenfeld. So really cool. I've got to say, I do like the look of their kit. Uh, so good stuff. Uh, moving on, also noticed that Cameron Brown was racing his final Ironman New Zealand. Now, he is 50 years old, still racing professionally and to a very high level, I might add. This is his 25th Ironman New Zealand, of which he's won 12 of those. Yeah. Pretty darn impressive. Um, and understandably, they gave him a lot of recognition for that. He even got his own little award ceremony um, because, yeah, this was his final year. So um, hats off to Cameron for that. Um, very, very impressive. Um, I'm also going to jump in here and make a shameless shout out to some friends. Well, they are ex-pro triathletes after all. Will Clark and Dave Bishop. I mean, they were very good pro triathletes, actually. I mean, Will Clark was a Commonwealth and Olympic triathlete under 23 world champion. Dave also won notable races, brother of Tom Bishop too. Uh, now they are ripping it up at the moment. They are targeting sub 220 marathons at the London Marathon, so best of luck to the lads for that. But at the weekend they had a little test event, a half marathon, just to see where they're at. Will went a PB of 107 and Dave a 106. So yeah, hats off to the lads for that and best of luck to them for the London Marathon and to anyone else because I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are targeting the London Marathon. Um, if you are, let us know in the comment section down below um, and maybe we'll try and give you guys some shout outs um, when it's happened. Uh, also, Alistair Brownlee pulled out of Ironman South Africa. I will get into the nitty gritty of all the race results very shortly. Uh, but yeah, sad to see Alistair pull out of this event because we were all really quite excited to see how he got on. I'm going to say it. I, I think Alistair is arguably the best triathlete we've ever seen. I'm sure you, some people will disagree, so let me know in the comment section down below who you think it is. But I've been very excited to see how he'll get on and whether he can go on to win the Ironman World Championships one day. Now, he is somewhat of a fragile, fragile athlete. Uh, last year, he was forced to withdraw from the Ironman World Championships in St. George due to illness in the lead up to it. He's also then had to withdraw from the Sub 7 project due to a bit of a niggle with his hip. Uh, things were looking good for the PTO Canadian Open. He actually broke away and was leading the race and then had stomach issues. Shoes. Bounce back with wins at Ironman 70.3 Swansea and Ironman Kalmar. And then he had to forego the rest of his season due to a stress fracture in his hip. Now things are looking good. He looked in great form leading into this race, but as this post says, had to withdraw due to some issues he'd been having with his hip. So hopefully he's just being cautious and being sensible here and we'll see him bouncing back for the next race um, and all will be good. Uh, Kat Matthews has announced her first race. So she is going to be racing in Ironman Texas. Um, back where the issues kind of started this past sort of year or so. So uh, wishing her all the best and very excited to see how she gets on. And I was very, very excited to see this post. Actually, almost by surprise, uh, George Peasgood had um, or suffered a diffuse um, axonal injury. So basically some trauma to the brain. Um, now, George is a silver medalist from the Tokyo Olympics for the PTS5 category. Um, and unfortunately, with an injury like this, this could be career over but I was really really pleased to see him back on the bike riding and just generally healthy and well and smiling so yeah great work mate. Oh, this next one's absolutely mad. Corporal Sam Hammond aka Man vs Fridge just ran a half marathon with a 26 kilogram fridge on his back. Yeah 
absolutely nuts. So the previous record stood at five hours, 49 minutes and 37 seconds. He absolutely smashed that and posted a time of two hours, four minutes and 13 seconds with a 26 kilogram fridge on his back. Um, nuts. I mean, that is faster than a lot of people will run a half marathon fresh without a fridge on their back. Uh, now, he was doing that all in aid of SSAFA, which is the Armed Forces Charity. Um, he also previously did the Welsh Three Peaks, um, and that was in aid of the Clamberis Mountain Rescue. All in all, he's raised over £5,000 for charity by doing these absolutely bonkers things with a fridge on his back. Um, and it sounds like he's probably not finished there. Um, so yeah, mate, well done. That is very, very impressive. Uh, finally, uh, Chris Nickick, who it, many of you will know, first person with Down syndrome to do Ironman Hawaii, um, just took part in the marathon in Tokyo. Now, if you haven't been following Chris Nickick, he is doing this 1% project, basically trying to better by 1% every day, and all in pursuit of a three hour 21 marathon time in Chicago Marathon. So it looks like he was using the Tokyo Marathon as a bit of a kind of a training uh, step towards that. Um, so he was out there at the weekend um, and he posted a time at five hours 51. Obviously his race in Chicago isn't until October, so he's got plenty of time to keep improving on that. But yeah, well done. Okay, moving on to the Try News, and it wouldn't be a week of triathlon news without talking about carbon shoes, would it? And this week is no different. This week, we have got some controversy from the WTCS race in Abu Dhabi. Now, it would appear that a federation or athlete from the race has appealed and protested against the shoes that Gustav Eden wore during the event. Now, if you remember back to the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii, Gustav wore those rather unique prototype shoes from on, which had a, an enormous stack high. Obviously, those shoes have since been banned um, because Ironman and also WTCS have adopted the rules from World Athletics, which prohibit those sorts of shoes. Um, now, according to the results, it says, uh, result of athlete number 41 is provisional, a shoe protest is pending. Now, to be clear, this isn't gonna drastically change the results anyway. Gustav finished way down in 52nd. Um, but uh, what's uncertain is what the appeal might be based on. Is it because the particular shoe that Gustav was wearing was a prototype shoe, or is it due to the depth of the shoe? Now, I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna hazard a guess he wasn't wearing those massive Ironman World Championship winning shoes. These are a different set of shoes, obviously. Um, now, the uh, World Triathlon, as I say, has adopted those rules. The rules um, of World Athletics states that any shoes should be available for purchase by any athlete on the open retail market for a period of four months before it can be used in competition. The sole must be no thicker than 40 millimeters. The shoe must contain no more than one rigid embedded plate or blade that runs either the full length or only part of the length of the shoe. The plate may be in more than one part, but those parts must be located sequentially in one plate, not stacked or in parallel, and must not overlap. Uh, now, we don't know for sure. Obviously, this could take two or three weeks for the appeal or the protest to go through and them to look into this. Um, I have heard from On that they say that the shoe that he wore has been officially approved by World Athletics already, but we just have to wait and hear. Um, I guess you could also start picking and probing at some of these athletes like Vincent Louis that was wearing the new Vaporfly um, threes from Nike. Um, maybe they're arguing that they've been on sale to select buyers. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Maybe it's just much ado about nothing. Maybe it's just jealousy. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Um, but uh, maybe we'll follow up again next week. It gives us another excuse to talk about carbon shoes in the show. Anyway, moving on. Um, cyclists are outnumbering drivers in London. Yeah, I thought this was pretty impressive. I mean, we all know how much traffic there is in London. Uh, this uh, report is based on the financial districts within London and suggests that peak times, people cycling represent 40% of road traffic in the city and 27% throughout the rest of the day. Uh, it goes on to say that long-term trends observed from account data taken from 12 sites across the city since 1999 show motor vehicle volumes continuing to decline and cycle volumes continuing to increase. Uh, 
um, which is really impressive. Keep up the good work, guys. Maybe we should see a better cycling infrastructure coming into London. Uh, moving on, uh, we had the European Indoor Athletics Championships over the past few days, um, and we saw obviously countless impressive performances. Uh, but yet again, it was Jakob Ingebrigtsen from Norway that kind of stole the show a little bit uh, with his 10th and 11th European titles. So he took the 1500 meter European title in an impressive 333.95, uh, which is a championship record. And then he went on just a day or so later to take the 3000 meter title in 740.32, splitting in sub four for the first 1500 and then 340 for the second 1500. Absolutely mind blowing, isn't it? Uh, subsequently, along with some of the other impressive Norwegian performances, they went on to actually top the medal table at the uh, European Indoor Athletics Championships for the first time, which is very cool. Um, and finally, another shameless shout out. Um, this time it's for something that I've been involved in. If you aren't already a uh, subscriber to GCN Plus, then I suggest going and checking it out. Um, because over there, not only can you obviously find the Norseman documentary, the long form and slightly different story to the the one that you may have seen on YouTube already. There's now another video that I got stuck into, and this one is even crazier. Yeah, I was involved in a channel crossing attempt along with John Schubert from GCN on a tandem bike. Yeah, we attached a bike to two kayaks essentially a glorified pedalo, and we tried to cycle across the English Channel from England to France. Uh, it was an adventure, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna check that out and maybe you are subscribed already, then head on over to GCN Plus. And now moving on to what the tech. This one really caught my eye and I'll be interested to hear from you guys as to what you think. So this comes from running shoe startup called Vimazi. Vimazi? I think that's how you say it, anyway. So they basically made pace-tuned running shoes. Essentially, they've got different models of shoes optimally designed for different paces that you may run at. So say you're going to do a marathon, you're targeting a certain pace, you pick a certain model based on that. Okay, so their CEO, Scott Tucker, says that um, at Vimazi, we've tuned the densities of the heel versus the forefoot in each of our models, so they compress optimally to forces of the impact and repulsion phases of the stride, which vary according to the pace you run. During uh, Doing this delivers more shock absorption at impact and minimizes energy loss at push-off. Uh, so they have these different models. So the Z40, which is between 615 to 745 minute miling, why do people work in minute miling? It's kilometers, surely. Anyway, uh, Z50, which is 7.15 to 8.45 minute miling. Z60, which is 8.30 to 10.30 minute miling. And Z70, which is 10 to 12.30 minute miling. Uh, they've got a lot of models there and certainly got all bases covered. Uh, be interested to see how they go down, whether they work. Let us know what you think to this idea in the comments section down below. I'm definitely interested. It's cool to see people giving these sort of things a go. Anyway, moving on uh, now to biking tech and the new SRAM Force Axis group set. Well, as many of you know, Force is SRAM's second tier group set below red. Um, now, the most notable thing with this SRAM Force Axis group set is that they've dropped the ETAP from the name. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe not the most notable, but maybe does suggest that Mechanical is dead and they don't feel the need to say ETAP in the names anymore. Uh, but yeah, so the this Force Axis group set has been updated. Um, they've got a unicorn grey iridescent laser foil finish on them. Whatever that means, but it does sound pretty cool, doesn't it? And the cassette and chains are available in a rainbow color option. I mean, who doesn't want a rainbow color cassette or chain? Pretty cool. Uh, they've also got uh, a redesigned front mech. They've also got integrated chain rings now, which means basically the inner and the outer chain ring are one piece, which not only looks very cool, and I really do mean that, it does look cool. Uh, they're also stiffer, better in terms of the power transfer, and of course there's less material, so they're lighter. They've also got the option for a spindle-based power meter, which is pretty cool. Um, so they're starting at 1,000 500 pounds through to around 2,200 pounds. So pretty cool stuff.
Okay, now for the race news, and we have got a lot of exciting racing to cover today. I'm going to jump straight in with Ironman South Africa because, well, there was a lot to talk about in that one. Uh, due to incoming storm reports of thunder and wind, both the pro and the age group races were delayed by 30 minutes and then subsequently shortened swims to just 900 metres. It does seem to be a bit of an Ironman South Africa swim curse with shortened or cancelled swims. Uh, now, Obviously, I don't know the true reasons behind why this all happened, but uh, it does seem that although the weather conditions looked fine for some of the race, and I know a lot of people were angry and posting it around on social media, it does seem like the weather really came in later on as well, so some athletes could have been caught out on course in that should they done the full swim. I don't know, but that was the decision on the day. Uh, it did probably change some of the dynamics of the racing, particularly for the pros. So we didn't see such large gaps coming out of the swim. Obviously, it was only 900 metres to try and split people up. So those small gaps were quite quickly closed down. And we saw that with Cameron Worth, who very quickly took to the lead on the bike. After 60k putt, over a minute into what was now a three-man chase pack, including Leon Chevalier, Brad Weiss, and Matt Troutman. But things did really change in the second half as Troutman dropped out, or dropped off, sorry. Uh, Bradley Weiss uh, dropped over four minutes off pace, and then Leon Chevalier closed the gap to just 40 seconds by T2. After 3K, Leon had taken the lead and went on to run a 2.47 marathon to take the win. Bradley Weiss took second, and Matthias Pedersen took third. Uh, now over on the women's side, the women's race, Fenella led the swim out, but similarly to Worth, it didn't take long for Laura Phillip to take the lead on the bike. Into T2, she had a five-minute buffer on Justine Mathieu. Uh, Penny Slater was just over six minutes behind, and then Fenella Lang was just over seven minutes behind. Then it was double figures to the rest of the field. Uh, Laura Phillip went on to post a 3.02 marathon to take the win. Fenella took second despite actually losing her nutrition off round 5k into the bike over a speed bump. So fair play to her for managing to recover that. But here's the interesting bit. Justine Matthew crossed the finish line in third only to be disqualified afterwards. Now she actually was leading the chase group on the bike for a large chunk of the race and was a clear second into transition behind Laura Phillip and just 52 seconds behind Fenella across the finish line. Uh, she has gone on to say, on the bike when I tried to pass the group to escape at the end of the first lap, I didn't. In other words, pass fast enough. I was in the group I was the last in the group at the time as I had just dropped my nutrition and was planning to go back up to the front. She added that the referee didn't flag the penalty at that point in what were tough, rainy and windy conditions and said she only heard the disqualification when crossing the finish line. Now this is quite costly. I mean, that's 9000 US dollars for third place. Also a qualification spot for the Ironman World Championships add to that, I guess, some PTO World Tour rankings. But also, I mean, had she been notified on the bike, she could have made some decisions. As a pro athlete, you might have decided, actually, I won't do the marathon, I'll save my legs. that allow me to back this up and do a race a little bit sooner, try and turn this around. Because obviously, at the end of the day, she wants to qualify for the Ironman World Championships. So she might look at doing an Ironman in maybe a few weeks' time. Now she's got a marathon in her legs, she's gonna be fatigued, tired, she's raced as hard as she possibly can she's got some tough decisions on her hands. And yeah, that's, um, that's a bit of a pain. So at the end of the day, it's Laura Phillip that took the win, Fenella Langridge in second, and then it's Penny Slater that was bumped up into third. Well, let us know what you think in the comments section down below. But now moving on to WTCS Abu Dhabi. So with the women's race, Sophie Coldwell led the swim out and she really managed to string the field out, although she did have a 10 second penalty to serve when she came into transition, apparently due to a slight false start. However, despite all of that, it didn't really seem to affect her because she still managed to latch onto the small breakaway group of five other athletes, which included Victoria Lopez, Summer Rappaport, Lena Meissner, Taylor Spivey, and Beth Potter. The chase group behind that grew to over 40, but it just seemed to be too large, not really working well together, so much so that that lead group managed to increase their advantage to over 45 seconds coming into T2. And with the likes of Beth Potter in that lead group, group the chasers, well, they'd really have their work cut out if they wanted to eat into any of that advantage. So the group 
or that lead group initially stuck together until Beth Potter kicked on a little on one of the climbs. And it was only Sophie Coldwell that was able to stick with her. Uh, Potter and Coldwell were neck and neck for the remainder of the race until the final lap when Beth Potter kicked on again on that same climb that she kicked on on the first lap and managed to just drop Coldwell. So it's Beth that went on to take the win. Sophie Coldwell taking second, which is very impressive, and Taylor Spivey in third. Also a notable mention to Katie Zafaris, who finished 37th in her first race back after giving birth to her first child. So very well done to all of them. In the men's race, it was a very powerful display from Vincent Louis in the swim and as he really put the hammer down at the start of the bike. So there were a group of 10 that managed to break away early on on the bike, but they just slowly got reeled in over the first couple of laps of the bike. But a notable name was missing from that group, and that was Hayden Wilde. He really seemed to be having a bit of a man. He has part of this post. He said, quitting was never an option. Um, he said he's disappointed he couldn't show off what he had today. He felt good in the swim, but made a poor decision. Seems he made a bit of a tactical error. And then he seems like he had a mechanical, and from this pitch you can see it looks like he had a puncture. And I mean, I've got to say, it's quite an impressive performance, really, because he only lost 30 seconds to the rest of the field on the bike despite riding solo and he had the fourth fastest run of the day posting a 14.42 over well just over 5k on the run so I'd argue there's some pretty good form there and if he didn't have these errors, well, he probably would be right there. Anyway, back to the pointy end of this race. Um, halfway through the first lap, um, Vincent Louis and Alex Yee were pushing the pace at the front of the field along with Canadian Tyler Michelchuk, who actually had a 10 second penalty to serve due to uh, equipment being out of the box. Onto that hill that Beth Potter kicked on on, Alex Yee used the same tactic and managed to crest over the top and have about a 20 meter advantage over the rest of the field just over that one hill. And that led him on to take the win with Vasco Velasha in second, Manuel Messias in third, and Vincent Louis actually taking fourth. Now we also had Ironman in New Zealand this weekend and I've had a couple of posts sent to me about the pronunciation of the place that Ironman New Zealand is in. Now uh, many of us say Taupo and quite rightly uh, someone has messaged me or a couple of people have messaged me to say that is incorrect and thank you for pointing that out because actually I had no idea. I did argue that maybe they've got the spelling of their name wrong uh, but no. Seriously, uh, apparently you pronounce it as toe paw, like a toe and a paw, toe paw. There we go. You can part of the Instagram post if you like, guys. Anyway, so there we go. Um, so the winner in the men's race was Mike Phillips, um, ahead of Braden Curry in second, Jan van Berkel in third, and Sebastian Keeley took fourth. Um, over in the women's race, it was Els Visser that took the win, uh, ahead of Hannah Berry in second and Rebecca Clark in third. Uh, there were two spots for the Ironman World Championships for both men and women there. Uh, Jan van Berkel was pre-qualified and Els Visser were pre-qualified. Um, so that means that Hannah Berry and Rebecca Clark will get the qualification spots there, which is pretty cool. Uh, upcoming races, we've got Clash Miami coming this week, uh, which has got quite a big field. Uh, we've got Sam Long, Jason West, um, who were both last year's top twos, joined this year by Vincent Louis, who's going to be heading straight over from Abu Dhabi, uh, Daniel Backergaard and Joe Skipper. Over on the women's side, we've got Sarah Perez-Sala, who will be back for redemption uh, after crashing out midway through the bike last year. Uh, she'll be joined by Pamela Pamela Oliveira, uh, Jackie Herring, um, Hayley Chira, and Lucy Byram. Uh, also have the Arena Games, which are taking place in Circe in Switzerland this weekend, along with Exterra Ritura Festival. Now let's take a look at some of the photos and videos that you guys have sent in to us and we've got some really good ones this week. Don't forget though, you can send in your own using the photo uploader. The link for that is on screen right now. You can find it in the description just down below. And this one's cool. Okay, so this one comes from Christopher. Uh, he's from Greenville in South Carolina, USA. He's got a Kenya Speedmax CFR with a Super 9 
disc on the back, um, but he has had a custom paintway done to it. So uh, he's gone for a WWF uh, wrestling theme. So he's got the Ultimate Warrior on one side, who many of you will remember, and Hulk Hogan on the other side, which says Hulkamania, uh, even with the slogan, what you're gonna do on there. Um, I've got to say, I really like it. It is really cool, particularly like the Ultimate Warrior side. And I love that you've gone the full hog and done the, uh, the decals on the wheels as well to match. So good work. Love that. Very good stuff. And I like the seamless transition from one side to the other. Uh, you can see that on the back as well. And next one coming in from Sarah from Brad Creek, Alberta, Canada, saying, wishing we were being pulled by the enthusiastic dog pack in the front. Uh, fat biking in loose snow is a workout on another level. Looking forward to summer riding. Well, that looks pretty cool. I'd be pretty keen on doing that, but I can understand it's probably pretty hard going. Uh, so thanks to you guys for sending those submissions, some fantastic ones this week. Uh, please do keep them coming in using the photo upload, you can find that in the description just down below. And finally, we've got the caption competition. Last week's photo was from the Arena Games in Montreal, and it was of Michelle Dillon with Lionel Sanders here looking... Uh, Rather unimpressed, whilst Michelle seems very happy to be having a photo with him. Anyway, we had some great captions coming in. Savage Pro saying, save what? Don't smile. Uh, Doug Gailey said, I just watched Heather's dance video and I learned you aren't supposed to smile. Um, Tim's triathlon journeys. Whoop whoop, I'm having so much fun here. Comic book guy. And you said the Norwegians are still planning to do all PTO events this year? Uh, Ishan Kumar, when you realise you accidentally signed up for the Iron Man instead of the Iron Kids race. Uh, but the winner goes to Kenneth McBeath. Uh, Lionel showing off his new range of sarcastic headbands. Also comes in happiest indoors. Yes, I completed it. And try it. It's fun. Uh, yeah, well, get in touch. We'll send out a cap to you. You're the winner this week. But now for this week's caption comp photo, it's uh, it's Hayden Wilde from WTCS Abu Dhabi looking rather jolly, considering he's in the middle of a race uh, and probably actually having a bit of a mare. Uh, so yeah, do your best to leave your captions in the comment section down below. And also I spotted this comment under the show last week. It comes from Pink Bunny Slippers great name. Uh, it said, if GTN ends up in Ibiza for the World Multisport Championships, uh, there will be lots of fans of the show there and we should agonise a meetup or ride. Uh, I think they mean organise, not agonise. Um, hopefully it'll be enjoyable, not agony. But anyway, uh, yes, we are hoping to be there. Not sure how many of us will be there. We're still planning all of that at the moment, but some of us will be there. Or at least one of us will be there and we'll definitely organise some sort of meetup. Um, but on that note, if you ever see us at events, because we are often heading out to them, please do come up and say hi. It's always great to say hi. Don't be afraid to. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully see some of you in Ibiza. If you're heading out there yourself, let us know in the comment section down below. And yeah, we'll try and get something organised. Anyway, that's it for the show this week. We've got some great stuff coming up, including a video all about sleep and how you might be able to sleep yourself faster. If if you haven't already seen some of the videos that come out this past week, another great one is does body shape matter for triathlon and should we really care? Is there a perfect body shape? Um, it's a very good watch, so do make sure you check that out. If you haven't already, head on over to our GTN shop for some of our merch like the tri suits, towels, jumpers, things that I'm wearing right now, then please do so. If you enjoyed today's show, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. I've done my best on my own. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you aren't already subscribed, please do so. Cheers.